Hi there, my name is Dawn Devine and welcome to my studio. This is another installment of my 31 day belly dance makeup vlogging challenge, where every day during the month of July 2016, I put on a new and different belly dance look. This look today was inspired by my purple plaid shirt. So although I would not necessarily wear a purple plaid shirt to belly dance in, I'm not actually performing today. Instead, I'm going to be working on edits for the book Becoming a Belly Dancer from Student to Stage. So I will be sitting at my desk looking this glamorous. Maybe I'll go out to lunch. I think I go out to lunch. I should go out to lunch. I got a request from one of my subscribers to demonstrate how I put on a turban. And while that isn't a makeup related thing, I thought, why not? But first, let me tell you what's on my face. After the moisturizer and the primer and the filler and all those things that make me as smooth and soft as possible, I wore this L'Oreal True Match in my color. I tapped in some under eye eraser from NYX. And instead of using a powder today, I went over it with this Milani cream to powder base. So I actually used two foundations today. I am feeling a little beat from putting so much makeup on and on and on. And my skin is screaming, why, why are you doing this to me? As for the color cosmetics, I'm gonna start from the top and go down. I use two products on my eyebrows, the Maybelline Brow Definer, which has a uh, pencil on one end and powder on the other. And I also um, hit my brows with some L'Oreal, what is this? Brow Stylist Plumper. It's like mascara for your brows. So this tiny mascara wand goes through the brows and keeps them all in place and does add a little bit of color. My eyeliner today is composed of two parts. I used a liquid pen from Essence. This one happens to have a long pointy felt tip to it. Used a different, slightly sparkly um, Physicians Formula pencil. They do not bother my eyes. And because I am a tight liner, meaning I put my eyeliner in the water line, I don't care if this smudges. I do care if it burns. And also these Physicians Formula glimmer sticks or shimmer sticks or, you know, come in trios. So for about 10 bucks, you get three. That makes them about $3 a piece, which is really affordable. They last a good long time and the bottom end of it actually comes off and it's a little, um, a little tiny pencil sharpener. You can, you know, wind it up and give it a little twist and, and sharpen it. I like that about these. On my eyelids today, I started off with a NYX uh, jumbo crayon base of Sparkle Nude, and I went all over the eye socket, all the way out. I used those two BH Cosmetics Foiled Eyes and Modern Mattes shadow palettes that I've been uh, focusing on this month. Because I don't have that much visual territory between my eye and my eyebrow, right? When I do this, it looks like it goes on for days, but really... In reality, I've only got about three quarters of an inch of visual distance. I try to keep my highlight really high and very much on the outside. I'm just rambling. And those two palettes gave me all of these shadows. So I stuck with a deep dark matte colors on my lid and into my eye socket and then added um, a frosting of three shades of glimmer. So there's very white in the corner um, a medium pink to a to a uh, even brighter pink. So I have three highlight colors on today. YouTube made me buy it moment. On my cheeks today, I'm wearing uh, Milani Luminoso, which I have paired that uh, Essence lip liner um, that I that I've used previously with uh, L'Oreal Number no. Three Fifteen True Red. These two products made this lip look today. This is a very classic bright, vivid red belly dancer look. So, so turbans, headdresses, I love them and I wear them and I guess it's become part of my persona to have a big, beautiful, bold headdress on. The real reason I wear headdresses and, and turbans and, and things of that nature is because my head sweats profusely and my goal is to create a barrier of cloth between my hairline and my eyebrows or I will feel my makeup fall off of me as my torrential downpour of sweat wipes it all away. So when I was quite young and 
to be fair, sweated a lot more, I learned that a, a good headdress could mask a lot of sins. The first layer of every headdress is a, is a bandana or a square of cotton cloth. Today's bandana is gray and looking quite drab. It really doesn't matter because this won't be seen if you tie your turban appropriately. Since this challenge is all about using what you've got and buying things affordably, what I like to use as a base turban for many of my current looks are affordable pashmina shawl ripoffs. I'm not talking about a real pashmina shawl. I'm talking about those cheap, uh, $10 ones that you can sometimes So get. for today's headdress, I'm using a pashmina a faux, faux, this is definitely faux. I'm using a faux pashmina shawl that is black with a burgundy um, panel. So I'm gonna fold it um, three quarters of the way. This is gonna be my forehead. The fold is gonna go next to my skin and this is gonna go over my head. So I'm gonna hold it with the fold side forward, right, with the shorter side forward, you can see that. And then I'm gonna flip it over my head. Here we go. Flip. And center it roughly. On the back, it should come to the nape of your neck. So I'm gonna take these two pieces and I'm gonna give them a twist. And giving them a twist pulls it tight. Now I like to go behind my ears. I like to, right? And I'm going to, and this is very much kind of like braiding. I'm going to pull them to either side, right? This is the moment when you make sure they're the same length or roughly the same length and that everything's tight. And I'm gonna make sure that the pretty side is out. So I'm gonna tuck the, the um, raw edges on the inside of this too. I'm gonna to bring it up and I'm going to just cross them. Now, if I was building up a bigger turban, I would use a much longer turban cloth. But what I like about these pashmina shawls is that you don't have to have a super long cloth to create some volume. A twist in this and now I'm tucking into that that twisted part so now I'm going to run my fingers through and I'm going to make sure that I have the shape that I want this is the result so this is a bandana and a faux pashmina scarf and so you can see how that worked if you want to make something a little more stage worthy because this is this is frankly a little bit dull right i like to use jewelry from my collection that i just happen to have sometimes it's tribal jewelry sometimes it's glam today we're going to go a little bit glam in this box which is a recycled altoids tin i keep my turban pins i see you can see i've labeled it turban pins i use altoid boxes for a myriad of things so having labels essential right i have several different styles of corsage pins these can be purchased at craft stores and floral shops and anywhere they sell things for brides because bridal corsages are essential and these have pearls on them if i'm if i'm feeling less pearly i also have some plain crystal ones as well these are about two and a half to three inches long and they really do the trick. So you add this necklace onto the front of my um, piece. Now, first off, I'm gonna tuck the, the chain from the necklace deep into my turban, but that's not gonna support it. I'm going to use these turban pins and I'm going for crystal today since I've got rhinestones on my thing on my thing, it's a rhinestone necklace. And you're going to feed the pin through a hole, so find a little hole. And this is better with a, with a uh, mirror. You wanna make sure that you're, you're following the, the flow of the turban. You don't wanna stick a pin directly into your head but rather you want to make sure the turban holds it. So I'm gonna put one right up front and I'm gonna go into the turban over the, and then I'm going to. If you're gonna be particularly vigorous in your dance, you may want to put in a few more, more is more. If it takes six pins to make you feel secure, great. If it takes 20 pins to make you feel secure, that's great. As long as you don't, 
engage in some strange ritualistic blood sport or acupuncture with your head, you're going to be fine. Now at this point, some dancers will put on a wall of flowers here and, and, and clip or pin hair flowers around their base. Some dancers will, will wear a, another turban layer over this, building up and out to create a new shape to their head and wear a, a drape over their head and down, down their body. So headdresses like this exist all over the world. And um, we're not just talking about the Middle East, we're talking North Africa, we're talking Central Asia, we're, uh, you know, I grew up wearing a babushka. It is, it doesn't feel unusual to me to have an embellished headscarf layered on top of a tight base cloth. It is something that women have done since the development of cloth, I imagine. You know, for classic ATS tribal style dancing, I might build up a much bigger turban. If I'm doing um, the Renaissance Fair and I'm looking for historic flavor or trying to recreate a particular style, I would try to match a photograph, a historic image, or, you know, an ethnographic picture. I'm going to take these and I'm going to pin this in because this is, I, this scarf is not big enough to tie. Ah, much better. My neck is uncovered. Today I am rocking a major cultural clash. We got a little bit of Scottish history and we've got a little bit of showgirl history and we've got a little bit of perhaps a sort of, I don't know, I feel very much like this is a very bouffanty sort of 60s throwback turban to Liz Taylor. Um, can you just picture Liz Taylor wearing this turban in 1964? Oh my god, she was the bomb. So there you have it. That is my turban du jour. I will be back in a couple of days with another complicated headdress. I just have to dig out all the parts and pieces. So while I know that the turban is a little off my mission for these 31 days of belly dance makeup, it is part of the overall look and it does impact how you put on your cosmetics. When you do a turban, you don't necessarily want to do complicated blending and uh, bronzing and things all the way up your forehead line because that those products will get on this turban. You want to make sure that you wear a cloth that is washable because you will get makeup on it. That's just a fact of life. If you're doing like two shows in a weekend and here I'm thinking about the Renaissance Fair which I used to do all the time, I would wear the same turban the next day and refold it so that I didn't get a white line of the previous day's makeup on there. A little gross but totally true. That's the way we live out there on the on the Ren Fair circuit. You, you don't really always have access to showers every night. Hodge pins are very important to have. I like to keep them in a, in a recycled tin and I like to have many of them available. These aren't very strong. They do bend and I find that after a performance I'll pull them out of my head and sometimes they're right they've turned them twisted themselves into right angles so make sure that you have a lot of these on hand if you're wearing a turban in performance make sure that you take your pins with you in your gig bag so that you have plenty on hand to do replacements to make sure you can pin down that last little thing that's sticking up at random and then at the end of the show when you're getting ready to pull it off and take it apart make sure you remember how many pins you have and do a pin count sometimes you don't want to drop them on the floor and leave them for somebody to step on so as you're pulling your pins you know if you put in 10 you know pull, pull out 10 make sure that you inventory your pins so you don't leave them around unlike a safety pin these are extremely painful when they go into an these aren't safety pins. These aren't safety pins. So let me come in for one last look of this brown plum and a lavender highlighted look, the bright red lips and the peachy cheeks, and of course, the turban. Thank you so much for coming. If you liked this video and you found it informative and inspirational, please subscribe below I'll be doing two more weeks of this, and if you subscribe, you'll get notices in your mailbox. If this is the first one you've seen, go back and check the playlist for my last uh, episodes of this vlogging challenge and check out some of the looks. A few of them are quite amazing. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.